Hello there, everybody. Dan Calloway here again, and thanks for watching. Um, appreciate uh, all my subscribers and uh, and everyone who's commented on the Linux Unix Tech channel. Really appreciate that. Coming to you again today to bring you another video. I hope will help you out. And today we're going to talk about K Dialog, uh, what K Dialog is and how to use it. I'll give you some examples on um, what you can do with it. It's basically a uh, it's bash scripting for KDE, which is the K desktop environment. Um, there's a website if you go to here, um, and it is uh, K dialog shell scripting with KDE, and it's up on bash dot cyber city dot biz. Okay, I'll put a link to this down on the uh, below the video here, so you can get to it. And it explains a little bit about what uh, K Dialog is and how to install it. Um, here you can install K Dialog uh, in Debian and Ubuntu Linux systems uh, from the command line using these two commands here: sudo apt-get update, that's to update your repos, and then sudo apt-get install KDE base dash bin. Uh, if you want to install um, K Dialog in uh, CentOS or Fedora or Red Hat. You can do, use the command yum group install and then uh, KDE K desktop environment. All right. Um, the way I installed uh, this in Arch Linux, okay, was very easy. What I did was I just went over to the uh, Whisper menu. Uh, whisker menu rather and went down to settings and up to add remove software and click on the hourglass here or the magnifying glass and uh, type in K dialog took me right there and all I did was just click this box here and then there was a button down here that said install commit and um, and it installed it for me so that was very easy uh, and um, I'll show you how to, uh, to use that once you've got it installed here in a moment. All right, so I'm in the terminal here. Uh, brought up the uh, XFCE terminal. Now I'm not running the K desktop environment here on my Linux system. I'm running the XFCE environment, desktop environment. But I can use, uh, take advantage of the K dialog because I've got K dialog installed, okay? And you can do the same as well. You don't have to be running KDE. However, it is to your advantage to be running KDE and especially um, KDE Plasma. I think the latest version is 5 because the dialog boxes that are produced uh, look much better than they do here in the Arch system. But uh, they're functional here in the Arch system, but they just look much nicer, prettier in the uh, KDE 5 Plasma. Okay, so I'm, I've got a little thing out here in my um, Sublime Text 2 and uh, to help me uh, go through this process of showing you what K Dialog is all about. And basically, if you read this, and I'll leave this, you can actually read this uh, from the video yourself. But I'll just let you know that K Dialog uh, is a graphical environment in the terminal, and it utilizes bash scripting in KDE to do all sorts of things, uh, create uh, dialog boxes on the screen in the terminal. It's really nice. Um, but in order to use it effectively, you're going to have to have a pretty much a firm grasp, you know, of Linux commands in the terminal, and also a little bit about uh, bash scripting itself. If you don't know that, I highly encourage you to go brush up on your your Linux commands in the terminal and also bash scripting before you begin looking at K dialog. Um, if you don't know which bash shell, or which shell rather, you're assigned, I'm, I've assigned bash. Um, and by default, in pretty much every Linux system out there today, uh, a new user or standard user that's set up in that Linux system uh, is going to be assigned the bash shell. Now, the bash stands for born again shell. Um, and that is the standard de facto shell for all Linux systems for the standard user. The way to find out which shell has been assigned to your user account, a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, first of all, you can look at what shells are available on your system. 
And why this is important, by the way, is because KDialog only works in Bash. So if you've got something other than the de facto Bash shell assigned to your uh, account, you need to switch to it or you won't be able to use it. Um, but anyway, to first to find out what shells are available, I'm going to run Kate against Etsy shells and uh, take a look at it. And here they are. Uh, these are the path names to all the shells. So there's one, two, three, uh, four, no, three, only three here in the system. No, there's four, get shell. So there's SH, that's shell. There's bash, born again shell. There's ZSH. And then there is get dash shell. Now there's, looks like there's another one here, user bin ZSH, but that's just the full path name to the bin SH as well. Um, the full path name to my shell is bin bash, okay? And that will be obvious here in a moment when I show you that to get to the information on your shell. Uh, let me go ahead and close that. All you need to do is I'm going to run Kate against uh, Etsy password. There's a file out there under the Etsy directory called password, P-A-S-S-W-D. And if I hit enter here, if you come down to the bottom here where my username is, that shows my username uh, in this file, um, across from that at the very end, there's the full path to my shell assignment, which is forward slash bin forward slash bash. Okay. So I'm in the bash shell, so I'm good to go. So let me go ahead and close that, and let me go ahead and clear the screen here. Now let me get over to um, this little uh, thing in Sublime Text 2 that I have set up again. And let's talk about KDialog. All right, KDialog is uh, invoked in the terminal by just typing KDialog followed by some options and arguments. I forgot to put dash in there for options arguments okay let me put that in there I need to correct that let me go ahead and save that here and so you'd need to put kdialog space dash dash or tac tac some options space tac tac some arguments all right you can see a list of options that are available by running the kdialog help and I think you would need to pipe that out to more because the list is fairly long. So let me get back here and we run a K dialog help and let's pipe that out to more. And you can see there's quite an extensive list here of options and um, arguments. Okay, so for instance, if we come down here to um, this one called yes no text. What that is, it's a question message box with yes, no buttons on it. And so if you did K dialog space, tac, tac, yes, no, space, and then put in the text that you want in quotes, um, that would show up in that box, okay? And so here's the list, and it's all two pages long here. All right, and so let me go ahead and quit this and uh, clear the screen again. Let's get back to that uh, list that we have. And um, so let's, uh, let's look at some examples here of some K dialog boxes that you can create uh, in the terminal. Let's look at example one. Example one is a simple password. And so it's called a password dialog here. And the command that you run is called K dialog space tac tac password, okay, space, and then that argument, which is I have set up is please enter the server access code, okay, followed by a colon, and it's in double quotes. All right, and so what happens here is K dialog, let me go ahead and copy this, um, takes an option followed by an argument, and in this case, password is the option, and the string enclosed in the double quotes is the argument that's passed, okay. So let's go out to the terminal, and uh, let me go ahead and um, I can just right click here and paste if I want in this particular XFCE terminal. So that's the command that we run, K dialog, password, please enter the server access code. Now if I hit the enter key, here's what happens. You get this nice little dialog box that popped up. 
please enter the server access code. And if you enter some generic password, I'm just going to enter the word password. Notice it's in asterisks. It's not in, you, it's not plain text. Um, and that's by design, okay? Because this is more than just, you know, a pretty dialog box and, you know, functionality beyond, I mean, limited rather to just filling in the password field. You can do other things with bash scripting to capture that password, for instance, or store it somewhere. If I click OK here, it's going to echo back on the screen in standard output the password that I entered in that uh, field that was all asterisk and that was password as I mentioned to you and so you get that echoed back alright so this is the first example you can you can play with this and do all kinds of stuff with it um, but this is the first simple example of what you can do here in um, K dialog so let's get back to the uh, screen here again and let's go on to the second example this one is a shell script returning a value here alright so in this example we're going to use a uh, command k dialog and then space tac tac password and then enter some text and then each time you run the k dialog uh, or any other application there's going to be a returned value that indicates whether the application uh, ran as expected or if it failed that command is called echo dollar question mark okay echo space dollar question mark if the command succeeds successfully, then you're going to get a return of uh, zero. Okay. If it fails, you're going to, or it doesn't run successfully, you're going to get a return here, value of one. So let's go ahead and copy out this command. And let me go ahead and do a copy. Let's go back to the terminal. <coughs> And let's run that command. Let me do a paste. Right click paste. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let it be successful the first time through. Um, so I'm going to hit the enter key. It pops up a dialog box. Enter some text. Okay, I'm just going to enter any text here for password. I'm going to click OK. It's going to echo that back to me. Okay. And now if I run the command echo dollar Oops, dollar question mark. You get a zero return value here, okay, which means that that command completed successfully. All right, I'm going to run it again, except this time I'm going to hit the cancel button. All right, so let's go ahead and run it. And instead of entering value, I could enter value there if I want to, but it doesn't matter. If I click cancel instead of OK, not, it's not going to return anything back and even if I put value in that field if I hit cancel it's not going to return anything back but if I hit the echo question dollar or dollar mark question again now this time instead of a zero I get a one returned alright so one if it's unsuccessful or doesn't complete properly zero if it does complete properly now why is that important that's important because you can use these values here to determine whether a person entered information correctly uh, or not, okay, or if they completed the, uh, the password field correctly or not by clicking that OK button. By having the program in a bash script, for instance, uh, return that value and send that value out and redirect it to a file or do something with it so that you can tell what's going on with it. And it, and it can also control other things that happen with subsequent commands in bash scripting. Okay, so that's very important. Um, let me hit clear the screen again. Let me run that one more time, except this time I am going to enter a value in here. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and click cancel to show you that you still get a value of one returned, which indicates not successful. Okay because the person didn't click the OK button, didn't get entered, and was unsuccessful. So it failed and we got a value of 1. OK, let's go back out and let's take a look at what we got here. We're in example uh, number 2 still. Um, what I want to do now is show you um, in this example here that if a string hello is entered and one clicks the OK button, 
a value of zero is returned for that dollar echo dollar question mark should be for echo dollar question mark let me go ahead and correct that because you, you can go and look at this later on your screen got typing too fast here today all right got that corrected now and then indicating uh, that it was successful a value of zero will be returned even if the field were left blank and the OK button is pressed if however one presses the cancel button the K dialog command is not successfully executed and as I indicated a return value of one is uh, is placed in there all right so the question mark uh, dollar question mark variable is updated each time it's forwarded uh, uh, each time the foreground process rather exits so if you need to use that variable later you can uh, store that into a particular file here is another command I'm going to run same command that we ran earlier except this time what's going to happen is let me go ahead and copy this and let me go back out to the terminal and I'll show you uh, and let's uh, right click and paste it in okay so what's going to happen is uh, we're going to get that dialog box a password dialog box that says enter some text and then <clears throat> what I've done is I've added on to this command line here the command echo que uh, dollar question mark and then I have appended that to a file called result.txt okay and the reason that I use the append uh, symbol instead of just the simple file redirection is because if I want to run multiple instances of the same command, then they don't replace what's currently there. It, it appends it, drops down to the next line, and I'll demonstrate that here right now. Okay, so the first time through, I'm going to hit the Enter key, and I'm going to enter some text. Okay, and then I'm going to click the OK button and you'll notice that text gets sent back to me okay then what I'm going to do is I'm going to it should have created now a file called result.txt and so I'm going to go ahead and create uh, result.txt and you can see that result.txt has a zero in that first line okay that means that it was successful the first time through all right I'm going to go ahead and close this file, result.txt. Now I don't need to delete that file, I just leave it where it is. I'm going to go ahead and rerun the command again, except this time I am going to put text in that field. But rather than click OK, I'm going to click Cancel. All right, nothing gets echoed back in the standard out on the terminal window. And when I hit the Kate against result.txt, Again, you'll notice that what happens the second time is there's a second line, and the second line has a value of 1, which means the second time through it was not successful. Uh, I clicked the Cancel button as opposed to clicking the OK button, and that's what you want to see. So this file, result.txt, stored out on the root, my home uh, directory here. Let's do a, let's do a listing here. Um, human readable and you can see here's the file right here result.txt okay um, it gets stored out there and it captures uh, subsequent attempts to run that particular command so that's a, a great little command to have uh, because it stores the value for later use okay let's get back out to the file that we're using and uh, let's take a look at example number three all right, in example number three, uh, this is another password dialog with return value check, okay? So what, uh, what you can do here is create a bash script that tests the return value after each execution. And this bash script looks something like this, okay? Um, I created this and uh, stored it on my system. Um, and so when I call the bash script, test underscore return underscore value dot sh um, you know it it contains this information right here so let's take a look at the bash script every bash script and this is why it's important that you know something about bash scripting uh, begins with pound uh, exclamation mark forward slash bin forward slash bash okay 
Underneath that is your Bash script, and then this is the programming language. It's called Bash Programming, and it's an if-else if statement, all right? So it says, kdialog, tac tac password, please enter the server access code, all right? If the variable dollar question mark is equal to, or is assigned rather, zero, then echo back, you selected OK. Else, echo back to the screen, you selected cancel, OK, and then enter, uh, en uh, end. All right, so you can call the bash script uh, after you run the, uh, we can call it actually and run the command and then uh, do something in the command and then it's going to return the appropriate value. So what we need to do is run the, the bash script using this command. I've got it installed on the system already and in order to make it executable you need to chmod the file which is the chmod u plus x to turn on the executable bit for the user or owner rather of the uh, of the command which is this bash shell okay so let's go back to the terminal and let me uh, run a listing here and you'll see that the uh, shell itself is right here. It's called test return value dot sh. And if I run a sa ls dash lh, uh, you can see that that particular shell does have the executable bit here turned on for the owner of that file. Test underscore return underscore value dot sh. You got to have that there, uh, otherwise it will not execute. Okay. And so let me go ahead and it's just test return value. Let me go ahead and clear the screen. So to execute that particular bash script, do a dot forward slash uh, test underscore return underscore value dot sh. And it popped up the, uh, it executed the script. It popped up the uh, same window that we saw before. I'm going to put in a password and I'm going to click OK. All right. And because it was successful, it says you selected OK. All right. If I run that script one more time, and I'm going to put in a password, but this time I'm going to click Cancel, it comes back because I clicked Cancel, it says you selected Cancel. So you can see the power here of KDialog and in incorporating uh, bash scripting in KDialog, which is the KDE dialog boxes. Uh, because it makes this an extremely usable, um, you know, uh, terminal application here that you can run. It's a lot of things you can do, a lot of power you've got in this. All right, so let me go back out. Let's clear the screen. Let's go back out here to uh, our uh, sheet again, and let's go to example number four. I've got two more to go. Example number four is another password dialog, but this time we're going to have a title. So in this example, we can add a title to the dialog box. Uh, remember, before it's been showing up as just KDialog. We can add a title to it by using the title option uh, to pass a title to our password dialog box uh, as well. And the command looks like this. It says KDialog, uh, tac tac title, and then in double quotes, whatever you want the title to be. Here I created the server entry and then tac tac password please enter the server access code okay so let's go ahead and we copy that we go back out to the terminal here and let me go ahead and paste that command in alright and let's go ahead and run it alright and notice here it says server entry okay k dialog and I'm going to enter a password and I'll go ahead and click OK and so it returns the value and so the only difference here is we now have a title that we can put on the dialog box itself instead of just leaving it with no title at all alright and finally the last one I want to show you is a little more complicated okay it's called a passive pop-up dialog box it doesn't have anything to do with password I'm gonna go ahead and um, when I get into the terminal I'll minimize it because I'll show you how that works um, this is a fifth example. And in this particular K dialog command, what it does is it pops up a brief pop up message on the screen for n number of seconds. That n number of seconds is designated right there. Okay. 
uh, and then it fades away on the on the screen. If you're familiar with Linux and you know that you get notifications from time to time in the system, this looks exactly like that. Okay, uh, so it's in some form or fashion, um, the developers in Linux are using K Dialog here. Um, you know, they're not pushing it to you, but they're doing something in the scripting that makes that notification dialog box pop up. And I'm pretty sure it, it's probably K Dialog. So in this particular example here, um, let's go ahead and let me copy out the command. Happens to be two lines here on this particular screen. Let me go ahead and copy it. Let me go back out to the terminal and to show you what this looks like better than, than what it would look like normally because it's going to show up right here in the upper right hand corner of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and do a right click and paste this command in and it reads as follows, kdialog space tac tac title so we're going to put a title on it and it says critical security updates available within double quotes and then space tac tac passive pop-up space backslash uh, greater than symbol uh, click more within 10 seconds to install and then space 10 and this is the number of seconds that it's going to stay on the screen before it fades so I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter key and watch in the upper right hand corner about right here what happens. Okay, you get a dialog box that pops up. It's a pop-up window. Uh, and then in 10 seconds, this is going to fade out. Very cool. Okay. Um, I can see this as being extremely powerful. Um, having events occur in Linux that cause dialog boxes to pop up like that. I'll run it one more time um, to let you see it. You know, to let the user know a notification of some kind, of something they've done or something that needs to happen or needs to be done. Very powerful command. All right. So this has been K Dialog. Um, glad to bring it to you, to show it to you. Um, leave comments down below uh, the video uh, if you want. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, Put those questions in uh, the comments in the video. I'll answer those when I get to it, and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Um, let me know if you like what you see. Let me know if there's anything else you would like to see. But this has been K Dialog, which is KDE K Desktop Environment Dialog Boxes. Have a nice day.